Hey YouTube, how's it going? Tucson. That's what I've got for your face balls this time around. This happens to be the Tucson TS67 Fire. So, obviously, what we've got here is flame anodized titanium. And uh, this is not a small knife. Um, it's small in a few ways, but... Uh, as you can probably already tell, it is it is definitely not uh, not a short guy. So anyway, let's do the uh, normal YouTube uh, protocol for size comparisons here. So I've got uh, Spyderco Manix 2 there on the top, and the uh, Para 3 Lightweight here on the bottom. So as you can see, uh, blade length wise. The old TS67 Fire is not messing around. Um, let's see here, we'll get, uh, oh, let's do another big huge knife. Do the uh, Cold Steel 8015. Get these guys lined up here. So, as you can see here, uh, this is, actually, they're damn nearly exactly the same. Uh, so, yeah, we're talking 8015 territory. For those of you that have an 8015, that's the kind of length we're just talking about here. So, anyway, let's, uh, let's get to it. So, what you're looking at here is the uh, Tucson TS67 Fire. Um, and you got an overall length of 8.5 inches. It's actually just, just over that. It's like 8.55. Uh, you got a 3 three and three quarter inch blade you got uh, just over four and three quarter inch handle uh, a little over 4.8 inches and in this dimension here the height of it is uh, 0.775 so just over three quarters of an inch and uh, the width of the knife is just under a half of an inch it's 0.46 um, blade thickness here you're looking at eighth inch so 125 thousandths and then thickness behind the edge on this guy is super consistent. The grinds on this thing are really, really good. Um, and it, you've got about 23 thousandths all the way around. You can see here it's a compound grind, uh, saber flat ground. Uh, you've got this uh, flat up here at the top. And then the actual bevel of the knife. And then you have this uh, kind of rounded uh, bevel. So this knife does not have any distal taper all the way until you get to this grind right out here. So very thick tip on this guy and it makes for you know an interesting looking blade. Um, it, uh, it works extremely well. I've had this guy for quite some time. <clears throat> I've, I've actually carried it and used it quite a bit and we'll kind of get into that a little bit. I do really like the blade. Um, it's extremely functional. Uh, it works well, you know, for opening packages and that kind of a thing. Uh, I, I do like the kind of rounded, I guess you could call it kind of a Tonto blade shape. Um, but, uh, you know, there definitely is a, a secondary point right here. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of an interesting knife. I, I really liked the aesthetic of it and, uh, you know, I like how clean it is, um, just really nice lines and, you know, in the closed position, yeah, you can't, uh, I, I just, I really like the look of the knife. It's pretty neat. <clears throat> so anyway, for weight, so uh, let's see here. So, so we're looking at the three, three and three quarter inch blade and we're just under four ounces. So... Yep. So, you know, not, uh, not overly heavy. Um, but you know, because it's, it's relatively small in this dimension, it, it does make it feel like it's pretty substantial. Um, so what we're looking at here is, uh, obviously titanium handles, um, and they're titanium frame lock. And, uh, it is riding on uh, ceramic bearings, got a ceramic detent ball milled titanium pocket clip you do have a lanyard uh, backspacer it's a uh, milled into the backspacer there so there is a lanyard hole um, I'm not a fan of lanyards but for those of you that are there you go 
And then the blade steel on this guy is D2. And uh, the, uh, I can't remember who the uh, designer is on this one, but there is the designer's mark right there. So standard uh, Tucson hardware, um, you know, you got uh, lock bar, uh, hardened steel lock bar insert with an over travel stop. Like I said, ceramic detent. You know, quality wise, it's it's really good. It's right there with any other, uh, you know, Chinese titanium frame lock. Um, yeah, just really well done. The flame anno is is really well done. Like I said, I mean, I've carried this quite a bit, so you can see some you know little snail trails on there, and you know, of course, show side pivot doesn't have a a Torx head, but on the all the two sun knives that I have, all the hardware is always. Uh, T8 Torx, with the exception of the lock bar insert, that's always T6. Uh, but yeah, you can see here that you know the flame anno carries over to the pocket clip, which is nice. You know they lined those up, and yeah, it looks nice. They did a good job. Um, action, really good. Because there's no distal taper in that blade, it is uh, relatively heavy out at the end. So when you open it you really get a really satisfying thwack. And uh, on the close, you know, it's not super, super uh, drop shutty, but a lot of that has to do with my hands are so damn big, I have trouble not putting pressure on the, the lock bar. Uh, so, you know, yeah, it does, it, the blade does fall really nicely. It's a, a real nice, smooth, action uh, but uh, but yeah there is some tension on that lock bar um, you can see here <clears throat> they've got a little area you know milled out for the the lock bar relief um, because the lines on this thing are so straight uh, I don't know if I'll be able to show this very well but but you know because the when the detent ball falls into the hole this side of the knife is not parallel with the blade. Um, and you don't really notice it so much on other knives, but on this knife, you can really notice it just because it's so long and straight. So even though the gap on this side is consistent all the way down, um, you know, if you really look at it, you can tell that this side, you know, is off a little bit, but yeah, it's just the, the function of the, the lock bar. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like I said, really good action. So <clears throat> let's uh, we'll pull this thing apart real quick and show you guys what we're dealing with inside. Um, I always really enjoy Tucson knives for disassembly. They never have any uh, Loctite, which is just fantastic. And like I said, always T8 hardware. Also really like that. Um, really nice machined screws. And then also, you know, on most of their knives, not always, but on most of them, they do an O-ring under the pivot screw. Uh, so that keeps everything from loosening up on you during use. But, yeah, so there you go. That's what we're looking at with the TS-67. So you got this small backspacer. Oop, lost the pivot. We'll just go ahead and set that down. <clears throat> Small backspacer, you can see the uh, the uh, lanyard hole there, and uh, you can see on this guy here where that lanyard relief is milled out. There's your over travel stop and ceramic detent ball. This is uh, blade blade stop uh, is in the blade and rides along uh, those tracks there in the scales. Uh, you can see the uh, nylon caged uh, ceramic bearings and you can see just a really nice uh, detent ramp and you can see the detent track there and yeah there's some pocket lint and stuff in here but but you know overall the machining is really nice Tucson always does a, a really nice job so especially for the money they're just uh, really really hard to beat and then one of the other things that they do that I like a lot, 
are these washers. You know, most companies just do flat steel washers. These are actually hardened steel washers with a groove cut in them for the bearings to ride in. And you can see that they surface ground those to be flat. And yeah, they just, just a really nice job. You know, and for the money, man, <laughs> it it always just blows my mind at what you can pick these knives up for. So I think I picked this guy up for, boy, it's been a little while, but I'm wanting to say it was probably around uh, 65 bucks, something like that. So I, I know I didn't pay any more than $70 for it for sure. So I can't remember exactly what I gave for this particular model. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely worth the money. I'm putting that O-ring on the wrong side. I should have just left it alone. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and reassemble this guy. So our bearings are already in place there. <clears throat> So, yeah, that's as uh, difficult as it gets with a Tucson knife right there. Put this O-ring back. You can see there's a nice uh, shoulder that the O-ring sets in. Uh, you know, and like I said, the, the hardware is always machined extremely nice. Uh, the uh, torques um, are always, you know, done deep enough to have positive engagement with your drivers and you know just just nice hardware same with the body screws you know they're nice machined machined uh, hardware and yeah just done well uh, now all the Tucson hardware that I have seen has always been stainless steel hardware um, so I don't know if they will start doing some titanium uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they do at some point, but as of right now, everything I have seen has always been stainless steel hardware. Let's see here. No blade play. We're centered. So, yeah. Action. Yeah, I got the pivot a little bit too tight here. Um... So, one of the things I did want to talk about, and really my only critique of this knife, I otherwise am pretty happy with it, um, there we go, um, is the pocket clip. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I like the aesthetic, I like the blade shape, uh, really thin, really good carry that way. It does have a little bit of a larger flipper tab, but honestly, these days, you know, everybody's doing flippers so much that I've just kind of grown used to that I guess um, you know I, I do like like I said the aesthetic and the blade shape I really enjoy I do like the flame anno it's done nicely the only complaint that I have about this is the damn pocket clip <laughs> so a couple of things one you know whether the the lock bar relief is internal or external generally doesn't bother me too much but this one it does because of the damn clip. So you can see that the pocket clip edge is really close to that lock bar relief cutaway. And you know, to me on this type of a knife, it would have made more sense to put that on the inside uh, just because of how just kind of blank and flat this knife is. But anyway, uh, they didn't do that. And as you can see, the ramp on this pocket clip is aggressive uh, on both ways and it just is not good to get in and out of the pocket and for that reason it really frustrates the hell out of me um, you know it's one of those things that if if this would have been a good pocket clip um, you know for example like Spyderco wire clip Hell, I'd, I'd be happy if they put a wire clip on this thing if it if this thing just went in and out of the pocket well I would carry it a lot more than I do because I really, really like the knife. Otherwise, you know, it, it kind of reminds me somewhat of a, you know, 
I don't know, it has kind of a Laconico feel in its simplicity and its straight lines and such. Um, you know, I'm not comparing this design, uh, you know, saying that, it, anyway, you, you get what I'm saying. It's just, it's that type of a knife uh, where it's just nice, clean, straight lines. And, and I really like that and enjoy that. Uh, but, and, and the pocket clip looks fine, you know, um, the height of it's good. The, your pants material fits under there fine. That part's all fine. It's the ramp on the clip and the tension on the clip. It's just, it's difficult to get in and out of the pocket. And for that reason, it just, it just sucks. They just kind of screwed up what could have been a, a, an absolute stellar piece, um, you know, so I may have to do something to make this pocket clip better. I don't know what yet exactly. I may have to grind that a little bit. But, you know, you just, for a knife that has this uh, kind of weight to it in this kind of small package, um, you know, you don't need a tremendous amount of tension here on the pocket clip. Uh, this thing's going to hang pretty nicely, and 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 it's got enough weight down here that you don't really need to worry about it uh, coming out of the pocket in that way. So, you know, anyway, I just thought uh, I'd show it off. Tucson TS67 Fire. Get the fingerprints off the blade. There you go, guys. Have a good one.